Welcome back guys, my name is Brandon and this week we've got a fun exciting episode. We're going to be doing some 12 volt electrical and it's going to be some convenient stuff. I'm going to be wiring up some lights inside my cabinet so that when I open the door the lights automatically turn on. It's going to be super easy and it can be used for a lot of other things, not just this trailer. Stick around. For those of you that are new here, we are building these cabinets and they're going to go in the front of my utility trailer. It's going to be a combination motorcycle toy hauler and mobile welding rig. At some point we still got to build these, but right now we're trying to get these finished up. This toolbox right here is the toolbox you see right here. We've got these doors all roughed in. We got to get them off to powder coat, but what I want to do is when I open up these cabinet doors, when the doors open, I want a light to come on inside this cabinet to light up this area. And I'll have links down below showing you all the things that I'm going to be using. Now, these are just some simple contacts that are going to mount on the door. And basically, one will go up here, then another mounts on the door. And when the door opens up, it'll turn on the light automatically. And these are the lights we're going to use. And I chose this model. And this is all stuff on Amazon because I liked that the back was aluminum and it had a place for it to mechanically connect as well. So what I'll probably do is put, uh, it's got some sticky tape as you can see here. I'll probably mount sticky tape on the back so it has like a little bit of a vibration mount and then we'll mechanically attach it with some screws right into this top rail just like that. All right, lucky enough for us, these came with uh, little tiny screws that we can put all this stuff together with. So we'll put a couple little holes in here to mount these up. You can see how it's got a little arrow there. We'll mount the corresponding one on the door facing that same arrow. So this one will have the arrow facing up. So the way these work, guys, is that there's a magnet inside this, inside both of them. And when the magnetic field breaks, it can either turn on the appliance or, or turn it off, however you wire it up. It's got a, a common, then it's got a normally open or a normally closed. So depending on which of those terminals you use, the normally open or normally closed, will determine if the light comes on when you open the door or if the light turns off when you open the door. Now this is a little far away. I don't know if we have to build this out. We may have to build this out a little bit. Maybe I'll put a little sticky pad on it. I'll just hold this up. Get it where it looks good. Now let's use my, my center punch. Center punch it. I don't know if you can see that, but that left a little tiny mark right there. Try to ream them out a little bit, that way I don't have problems. Maybe the key is kind of like, almost like you're tapping it. Thread it in like, slowly. Back and forth, yeah, that seems to be the key, guys, right there. That seems to be how, you, how to do it. So I'll go through this trial and error stuff, guys, so you don't have to. So if you do this, put the screw in a little bit, and then back it out. Keep just turning the screw in and out as you continue to tighten it. Might as well mount the light, too, right? Something like that. So I want, my thoughts were, is to keep the wire relatively close to the light fixture so we could stuff the slack inside without having a lot of like cable ties and clips and stuff. This would just be one less thing is having the light up high like this. Um, the bench top will be right here. Um, this will just shine the light down really good and this will keep it from getting hit. Probably hard to see but it actually has like a dome over the top of the LEDs with a nice metal back. So let's mount, mount it something like this. It looks good, just kind of ballpark everything where it needs to be. Get it in the close proximity, that looks pretty good. Punch it. There we go. Spray on some glass cleaner so I can use those little adhesive pieces. Do one like that. We'll do another one right on the other end. Be a good little vibration mount. Try to center it over our little mark that we just drilled, our hole. Get 
nice and solid. I tried it guys and it didn't work. It was just too far away from that upper contactor. So I got a piece of Velcro. I'm gonna stick it to the back of this magnetic contactor. Then that'll build it out enough and it should work perfect. So let's give this a go. All right, let's give her a try. Just got a little 12 volt battery for my generator that I'm just using to power these up. Got the positive and the negative hooked up and then this wire comes up. I'm taking the one out of this light and going to the common and then we're coming up with ground. I'm going to the normally open contact and then power is just going into the light. So the circuit is completed by power comes up, goes through the LED, comes back, comes back on the ground, stops here and then when the contact is broken from this it pulls the plunger or however it works and completes the circuit, bridges it across up here. Put my hand on the back side. I'm going to open the door slowly so we can see how it works. And there we go. So the light comes on almost instantaneously. Then you go to close it and it turns off. All right, slight change of plans, guys. I did not like this contactor here, and I did not like that it was like built out with that Velcro because I could just picture when the doors open that this contact would get ripped off. So what I did was is I moved everything over to here, and I think this is just a lot better. It's out of the way, it works better. Watch this. Open the door. Takes a little bit longer for it to turn on. But there it is. So the doors open that much um, before it turns on. But overall, this is just a way better installation. It's being over here, it is just so less of a chance of it getting knocked and ripped off like it was here. It would get bumped here pretty easily. So yeah, so that's where we're gonna put it. So all we gotta do now is basically just drill a hole right here, run the wire from this side over to the other side and then just do a nice, nice neat job. It might have to have like one, you know, a couple pieces of like sticky back stuff right here, just holding this up. So the next thing we're gonna do guys is I'm gonna drill a hole right in here and that'll allow me to run these wires over to the next one on the other side, the other cabinet door and I'm going to drill this out for now, but I don't have a grommet that is actually wide enough to allow for this material. So we'll just kind of drill a big hole and then I'll just have to search out a grommet because this is quarter inch material. I do have a grommet kit, but it just won't stretch wide enough to accept this quarter inch thick uh, material. So we'll drill the big hole, get the wires run, and then we'll just put the grommets in after. It looks plenty large to get a wire in and out of there. Let's pass a file down through the inside to take off any burrs that might have formed. And now we just gotta do the same thing over here. And I'll do the same thing. Run a file down inside of it just to get any burrs off. So for wire, this is what we're using, 18 gauge. And from what I can tell, it looks like this is gonna be rated for about five amps uh, for what we're trying to do. It's only running two of those LED lights. So this will be more than plenty to power up those lights. These conductors are way bigger than the actual individual conductors that are coming off those LEDs. So this should be fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start feeding this. Hopefully we can get it fed all the way down to the other end and it comes out that other hole hopefully there it is we got more than enough we only really need it to go to this contactor so i can pull a little bit of this back now because this is going to be in a trailer and it's going to be going down the road and there's going to be vibration and everything else, I always try to think of those things of like problems. 
You know, problems always persist when you're in the middle of doing something important. The last thing I want is to have a problem when I'm doing something important. It'll never break when you don't need it or when it's just sitting there. It's always going to be at the worst possible time. So, To prevent any like abrasion or anything else, I picked up some of this wire. It's hard to see, but it's almost like a little vinyl wire covering. And I'm going to slide that over this wire. And that'll just help protect this wire while it's inside this tube from when it's vibrating around that it's not going to abrade the wire. It'll, it'll give it a little bit of more protection. So. And I'll, again, I'll have links to all this stuff that I'm using down in the description of the video. Um, I got all this stuff on Amazon. I just picked it all out. In hindsight, I wish I would have got a little bit bigger sheathing for this wire, but it works, but it just fits a little dry. But that is the stuff I got. It's quarter inch. Uh, I should, and it's a hundred foot roll. I probably should have got the next size up to make it a little bit easier for this 18 gauge wire, but it does work. Almost like a Chinese finger. The more you pull it from this side, the more friction it gets. There's probably a secret to this, and I just don't know what. Oh yeah, there is a secret. Look, you push it just like a Chinese finger. That's the secret. Huh? Okay, that's how you do it, guys. Watch. So here's the end of my wire, right at my fingers. If I just squeeze that and make like a bunch, watch it like propel ahead at the end. There it is. So that's the key. All right. There's always a secret to everything. I just think I figured this one out. Well, at this rate, I'm going to be a month of Sundays. So let me uh, let me get this all pushed back over to the other side. And once it's back out the other end, we'll resume what we're doing here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, guys, is called tinning the wires. And what this does is basically I'm just going to heat the wire up a little bit and just drop a little bit of solder on it. And then that'll make the wire uh, hard on the end so that it doesn't come unfrayed. It just it'll give it a better connection at the uh, at the terminals. You know, when you use a flame like this, you got to be real careful that you don't burn up uh, burn up the sheathing. So you just want to go in it real quick. And that's it. Now to keep this wrap or covering neat, what I'm going to do is just wrap it with a piece of tape. And then to hold the tape together, I'm just going to put a piece of heat shrink over it. That way it won't unravel and it'll just give a nice professional appearance. Then if there's any extra, I'll probably just make like a small coil, tuck it up into here so that we could, if we had to make repairs or anything like that. All right, well, we might as well do all our heat shrinking all at once if we're going to do it, right guys? This is another awesome kit. I think I picked this up on Amazon too. And it's 160 pieces of just small uh, heat shrink. And what I do is, like for something like this, I'll just cut one of these in half and then that'll work perfect. So yeah, these work good. These just finish, you know, it's all these little finishing touches and details that you do guys that just kind of separate your job from the next guy's job. Not that I'm trying to compare myself or compare this to anyone else, but you know, maybe someday down the road, I want to sell this and maybe somebody is similar to me and these things matter. They look at this and they're like, wow, this guy took his time to, you know, put some sheathing on it and to protect the wires and blah, blah, blah. And um, I don't know, I just think it shows that you care a little bit more. It definitely takes less time to do it right the first time than it does to have to redo it. So, and I've learned that the hard way. So now I just try to do it the right way and then I don't have to worry about it. You know, a lot to be said for peace of mind, knowing that you've done something the best way you can do it doesn't mean it's not gonna cause a problem down the road sometime, maybe it will, but uh, but at least you can kind of rest assured that you did the best with, you know, what you had at the time. So, all right, let's shrink that up. So I just stripped out these little ends right here and we just need to get these tinned. 
then we can make the connection and move over to the other side and this side will be done excluding the grommet of course the idea is what you're trying to do is have the solder follow the heat not necessarily uh, melt the solder onto the wire now by wiring it this way guys uh, from the common to the normally open contact that just makes it so that the light turns on when the door opens if we wired it to the normally closed contact the light would always be on then it would just turn off once we open the door that's the nice things about these uh, these contacts because you can kind of wire them up to suit your need whatever works best for you and I'll probably put a little hook in the wire just to help again mechanically connect it and we'll do the same thing with the black wire coming off the light put a little bend on it so that way it's got a mechanical connection as well just got to connect this to this just like that give it a little squeeze you won't go too tight. Sometimes if you go too tight on these, you'll actually break the wire inside the connector. That looks pretty good, guys. Wires are all safe. Not going to get chafed. We'll stick a little grommet in there. Give it some extra protection. We're doing the same thing all over again, guys. We're just doing it on this side of the door. That's all. Again, the tips to screwing these in. So you don't snap the heads off, just give it a little bit of a turn, then back it out. Turn it in a little more, back it out. Turn it in some more, back it out. What was happening is, is that I was just trying to like screw it in normal, and it was snapping the head right off. So Then once you get it through uh, far enough, then it, it isn't a problem at all. Then we can do final adjustments once, uh, once everything's wired up. Tighten it, loosen it. Tighten it. Loosen it. And again, we got to line up that little arrow to the arrow right here on this. I'll place this up there in close proximity. Center punch it. Boom. Boom. Now, when we send these doors off to powder coat, I will have to remove these magnetic uh, contactors because they go in the oven and I think the oven's like 500 degrees so it would melt them so we wouldn't want that and I've already called the powder coat guy and asked him if these would be okay you know if you can put aluminum in it he said oh yeah for sure easily not a problem they do it all the time he said I just think this is a better way of uh, putting these contactors on guys just because we don't have to worry about the contactor getting ripped off because it's on the hinge side. Alright so we got the contact switches mounted over here and what I learned from the other one is that it was just almost a little too far away to make this connection from the light. So I'm going to give it just a little bit, make it a little bit closer to the contactor so that we don't have to stretch the wire quite as far and I think it will give us a little bit easier time when we go to put all this stuff together. So, Right about here looks good. We'll take our center punch, make a mark, and the way this works guys is that this is just a spring-loaded center punch. When you push on this little end right here it just retracts in and then there's a spring and it snaps it. Then it leaves a little indentation where you need to drill. So right there. Now we're going to have to be careful when we drill this that we don't hit our wire that's down inside of that. Perfect. So we'll have to go in real gentle when we drill it. And as an extra precaution guys when I put the screws through I'm going to trim them off so they're blunt on the back and they don't have a sharp point and they're shorter so I don't have to worry about them piercing into that wire. Not that I think they would, but I think it's just an extra precaution we can add to be just a little bit safer. And I've got, just like the other one, a little bit of sticky back on the back of this, uh, on the back of this light. And here is this side complete, obviously minus the grommet still. 
Uh, I put a butt connector here, so in the event I wanted to put an additional line out for an additional light, I have the provisions of just putting it in there and crimping it, and then just connecting it to this terminal right here for the black side. So this is the power. This will go to the front of the trailer and go down to the battery. That will eventually be at the front of the trailer. Right now we're just using this battery as a test piece. But for now they're all wired up and I'll show you exactly how they work. So when I press this button over here, the door will open up and the light comes on. It does the same thing over here on this side. Now let me turn off all the lights in my workshop. And there you go. So you can see how bright that is. That's lighting up my workshop pretty bright. And if that's able to light up my workshop like that, just got to remember, this is going to be inside a, an enclosure that's probably three feet deep. So it's going to be nice and bright inside. These are going to work awesome. And you know something guys, it's these little conveniences or these little convenience items that set your work apart from the next guys. Like let's say there was, you know, two or three trailers for sale on Marketplace and one of them happened to have these little extra features of, you know, lighting inside the cabinets and whatnot. That's a convenience, especially if you're working at night and you're trying to get to something, you're not using a flashlight. Just to be able to open a door with nothing else in your hand and be able to see inside that cabinet, that's worth something. It's worth something to me anyways, these little conveniences, and it doesn't cost a whole lot, especially if you're doing it yourself. Probably $30 in this tops, and I have extra lights so I can do it for the upper cabinets and extra wire so I can wire more lights elsewhere in the trailer. So. If you're wondering about any of the things that you see me using, I'll have links down below. You guys can check it out. There's new videos every Friday, so I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this is something that you like, I appreciate that you subscribe, like, and comment. But until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. God bless. See ya. Come, come.